Hello and welcome to the song tutorial for Music Box Dancer. So this was a very popular song and a lot of you know it and if you don't think you know it, as soon as you hear it, you'll be like, oh, I know that song. Um, it's really pretty. It really does sound like it belongs um, inside of a music box. So it's in the key of C and while there are a lot of notes on the page, once you get the pattern, the song is actually not too difficult to play. So don't let the notes on the page overwhelm you. I'm going to walk you through this every single step of the way. Uh, so. Let's dive in. Here we go. So the first thing we want to look at is our left hand. And now the notes that we're going to be playing for the left hand belong to the C chord. So we have C, E, and G that we're working with. And they're written in the bass clef down here. Low C, E, and G. But above that you're going to see 8 V A. And that tells us that we're supposed to play it an octave higher than where it's written. So if it's written here, we're going to just take our hand and move it up an octave, meaning my five finger is now on middle C. And so that takes some getting used to. Don't let it throw you off. It's exactly the same notes, but you're just playing them an octave higher than they're written. And the reason for this is that if we were to notate this up here, it would all be ledger lines and it would look really confusing. So this just makes it look simpler. All you gotta do is translate it up here. So we're gonna go five on C, three on E, then G, back down to E, and then all the way up to C. Now, I adjusted my bench slightly more to the right than I normally would and farther back than I normally would because I'm up here and it can feel weird having this kind of crossover. So I'm sitting a little further back than normal to give myself more room and I'm slightly to the right of the center just to make it a little more comfortable. So feel free to do that. Here we go. C, E, G, E. Rotate up to the C. And remember, you don't have to play it down here. You can slide your hand up a bit if that feels better. G, E. G, and then you do that exact same thing again. Stay relaxed at the top of the hand. Don't get tense. This just keeps on repeating. This is the intro to the song. One more time in measure four. And the pattern changes now. So we're still 8 VA. That's why we have those little dots that look like a road across the page. So you're going to be playing C, but up here. It's written here. You're playing it on middle C. So C with E and G two times. Now we're moving to an F chord shape. So C with F and A back to C. Once you get comfortable there, move your five finger down to G for measure seven and then B and F and then back to that C position. And now the pattern resets. So C with E and G two times. And then we move to that F shape, C with F and A and back to C down to G and C and then you've got it that's the left hand so once you're comfortable there you can work on the right hand which begins in measure four there's a C that starts kind of the very last moment it's like a pickup beat and I like to use my two finger because we move down to G up to C then E G with my thumb E that's an E, yep, G, C, and all the way up to the ledger line note, it's C, and then you just walk down. That repeats a lot in the song, so let's get comfortable with it. We're gonna go C, C, G, C, E, thumb on C. This is just a broken C chord. All the way up to high C, and stepping down. Now you're gonna reset your hand by placing your five finger on G, and we're essentially just playing a broken G7 chord. And then we move, our third finger can go on E, C, A, G. Then the pattern repeats. I'll play it a little bit more quickly. All the way, we stretch up to the high C, walk down, and then reset, five finger on G, F, E, that's not E, D, G, F, D, B, G, B, D, B, C, G, E, C, C, and then it repeats. So this is where you have to kind of move your eyes around a bit in the music. So when you come to measure 12, you're going to play that full measure and then you're going to rejoin the song on measure 5. And that's going to carry you through the repeat beautifully. So. Once you're ready to put this hands together, this is how it will look. I'll begin on measure four. So we're up an octave here. I'm gonna get this hand ready. They play together on this moment. Then I'm gonna switch to my two. You 
have to share the space here. So this plays, you go together. Your right hand gets out of the way, so your left hand can play. And then you reach up. Your left hand moves to that F and then C shape. Down to B here, reset here. I play that fingering a little funny. Let's try that again. That's better. And again. Reach up. We're nice and slow because you always want to start slow. Build that foundation before you go for the speed. Now, some of you might be thinking, if you know the song, where's that like written sound? And what I mean is this, when you... That looks really crazy when you notate it. I'm gonna show you how to do it at the end. It's not as hard as you might think, but let's learn the structure of the piece first and then we'll add that on at the end. So once you're comfortable there, we're gonna learn the next section of the song. It's like the part two. Um, and it's shown in the music as the C section and it happens on measure 13, 14, <laughs> 14. So pretend like you've just gone through the song, you've repeated it, you're coming back through measure 10, measure 11, instead of playing measure 12 where we have that little one on top of it, we're gonna skip. We're gonna go from measure 11, which is this, to measure 13. Then we've got this C repeating, and we reach all the way up to this high C, and things change a bit. So let's talk about that quickly. So we begin this section of the song on high C, and then we've got A, and then F, and then C. And that actually feels better for me. Five, three, two, one, cross over, two, one, two, three. This is G, I'm using my two, but you can find a path that feels really good for you for fingering. Um, these are just suggestions. And then we're back in familiar t territory. It's really hard to talk and play. And then this E repeats and it resets that pattern where you cross over with your two. Mm, that's wrong. C, it's a G, C, A, G, C, C, C. Here's that broken G7 chord. And then C, G, E, C. So, hands together. And I'm gonna give you a little tip while we talk about this hands together because sometimes it can be hard to get the hands to coordinate. So when you're thinking about the right hand, think one and two and three and four and. And then think of the left hand as happening on all the numbers, not the ands. So what I mean is one and two and three and four and one and two so that might help you a little bit when it comes time to putting this together. And well, you know what, we've looked at the right hand, let's take a quick review of that left hand too before we get to putting it together because that's gonna feel even better for you. Because something has changed here. We are no longer in 8VA land. So the notes you're seeing on the page are now played exactly where they appear on the staff, which means your left hand's gonna play F here, and then you've got A and middle C. The five finger is gonna drop down to E and you've got G and C. It drops down again to B and you've got G and B. And then down to C. So it's kind of like a nice little climb down. Back up to the F. Drop to the E, we've got G and C. Drop down again, we've got D, G and B on top. And then nicely home to C. So all together, here we go. Really slow. We can count. I'll start counting in just a second. Here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And it just keeps on going. Such a cheerful song. And that's it. That's our sweet, shortened little version of Music Box Dancer just for you. So take your time with each part. Go slowly, slower is better. Once you've laid that foundation, you can bring it up to speed. So the final thing I wanted to talk to you about is those fun little kind of rolled chords, arpeggiated chords that happen in the original version. So what you can do, I'll go back to the beginning of the song. This is the moment
moment where we have that. So in order to make that happen, you don't have to, it's totally okay to skip this, but this is an inverted F chord. So we have C, F, A, and C that we need to make this happen. And all you have to do is find the shape and roll through it. So pretend like this roll is what's bringing you to that high C note. So if I just play that right hand, that's where that happens. And the same thing can happen on this G7. So you can build the chord G, B, D, get ready because G is our target, right? That's the melody note we're going for. You roll through. And then you can keep doing that throughout the song as you see fit. So there's that extra little bit of icing on the cake should you wish to use it. You don't have all the skills that you need to learn and play and perform Music Box Dancer. So I hope you have tons of fun. Happy practicing. Comment below if you have questions and we'll see you next time.